dad and also mine that uh, we we know the right care and the right care and uh, the the steps of development in our children. So okay, let's start with our first agenda. So our first agenda was. spends most of her time eating and sleeping. She should alert to sound, suck in a coordinated fashion, and fix her gaze on a face. The newborn cries to make her needs known, and ideally, these needs are met by the caregiver. Discuss with caregivers how newborns learn by hearing parents speak to them and examining their faces. This is a good time to talk about attachment and to promote the important role of the new parent in a child's development. Following the newborn visit, the child visits the pediatrician at 2 four, and six months. What should that child be doing? Two months. At two months, she is lifting her head when prone. She now has a social smile, can track horizontally with her gaze, and can stay alert for longer periods of time. Four months. At four months, the child wants to engage with her environment more. This is how she will learn and gain motor skills. To allow that to happen, the atonic neck reflexes fade at four months and allows her to roll from front to back. She is making sounds to communicate, laughs, and orients to a parent's voice. Cognitive skills are gained through sensory motor exploration, so she loves looking around at the environment. At this point, she can bring her hands to midline and her fist will hold onto a toy tightly that she then might put in her mouth. Now that a child is rolling, falls are more of a risk. Advise parents to never leave a baby unattended on a bed or couch. Six months. At six months, she masters the ability to sit with support and begins to babble with consonants. She reaches for caregivers and for toys and will transfer a toy from one hand to the other. She is really eager to explore and all of her primitive reflexes should be gone. Nine months. At nine months, sitting is getting boring, and she needs to pull to stand and cruise as she prepares to walk. She will now turn her consonant sounds into mama or dada nonspecifically. She can use an immature pincer grasp to explore items or to pick up simple foods and put them in her mouth. 
She can turn the pages in a board book. Cognitively, she realizes that when she drops something, it doesn't just vanish, but objects have permanence. Thus, she is also developing emerging separation anxiety, realizing that mama and dada still exist even though they aren't in the room. Since the child is picking up smaller objects, this is a good time to discuss choking risks. This also is the time for talking about separation anxiety. 12 months. As she reaches a year, her mama and dada are applied to the correct person. She will also form at least one other word. She realizes that sounds and gestures can tell other people what she wants and a point will emerge. She should begin to pair that point with eye contact and a sound or word to let others know she wants that toy. This is joint attention. She takes her first independent steps. She can also pick up small objects with a more developed pincer grasp, adding to her ability to learn and explore in sensory motor fashion. She can understand simple commands with a gesture like, come here. 15 months. She refines her early language, motor, and cognitive skills by expanding to a three to six word vocabulary, pointing not only to show what she needs, but also just to share her interest and showing things to her parents. She is more able to feed herself with a spoon and can use a cup. She is refining her walking skills, stoops, and recovers, and also likes to scribble, so keep the markers away from the furniture. It's a good time to discuss how to handle tantrums. These are a normal way that a child can express her sense of independence. No words and no pointing are red flags at this age. 18 months. Her vocabulary is doubling. She can now say between five to 10 words while doing plenty of jargoning. She is using her pointing ability to label at least one body part in addition to pointing to show someone what she wants. Now that she is making all of these gains, she starts using her language and motor skills to imitate those around her, often trying to help out around the house. You might find her stacking three blocks or starting to run. 24 months. Two years is a big time. She really wants to increase her independence. So what does she need to do? She is putting two words together. She has about 50 words to choose from, but only 50% understood by others. She is following two-step commands and going up and down stairs two feet at a time while holding onto a railing. She is feeding herself with two utensils, a spoon and a fork, and jumping with two feet off the floor and realizes that two kids playing in parallel is pretty nice. She is turning thin pages and drawing lines. Her block tower has doubled to six blocks high. Sir, I have a few questions for you. Please. Please ask what uh, is it right that So, uh, thank you for the question. No? So, uh, we need to discuss further Three years. At her next birthday, she has places to go such as up or down stairs with alternating feet or via pedaling a tricycle. She is drawing circles and her cube tower has tripled to nine blocks high and she can build a three block bridge to add to her castle. She is using pronouns correctly and thankfully a stranger can understand 75% of her language which consists of three word sentences. She can put on her shoes and undress herself and brush her teeth with help. She knows her name and age and can name colors. She is interacting in group play and taking turns. Play becomes more imaginative as children seek to understand the world around them and explore it with other children. She is most likely toilet trained during the day. Four years. Her drawing skills now include a four-sided square or a cross and she can hop on one foot. She can manipulate buttons. She is fully understood by strangers and is answering what and when questions. She knows how to follow the rules in a game or in play such as a simple board game. She knows at least four colors. Five years. As she prepares to enter kindergarten, she is skipping and tying her shoes. She can draw a triangle and print her first name. She draws a person with the head and body parts, and she knows her left from her right. She is ever curious, asking questions about what a word means or why we do things. She can follow a three-step command and knows her address, birthday, and phone number. She answers more complex why questions. She can name the alphabet and count to ten. Hello, chica, chico. 
So let's move on. So uh, this part we will be discussing the different types of children. Persistent primitive reflexes beyond six months is a red flag and warrants further evaluation. It is a good time to start child-proofing the home as the child is starting to move around more and explore the environment. Hand preference before age one is a red flag as this might indicate decreased strength or tone on one side, suggesting an underlying neurologic deficit. Another red flag is minimal response to name. No words and no pointing are red flags at this age. Red flags at 18 months include not pointing to show things to others, can't walk, not imitating, not gaining new words, or not noticing when caregiver leaves or returns. Red flags at two years include not using two-word phrases, for example, drink milk, not knowing what to do with common things such as a brush, spoon, or phone, not imitating actions or words, not following simple instructions, not walking steadily, or losing skills she once had. Red flags at three years old that should be noted include not playing pretend or not playing with other children, falling frequently, no three-word phrases, and repetitive behaviors. Red flags at four years old include difficulties with feeding, sleep, or toileting, speech is not clear, not following three-part commands, or not speaking in short sentences. Red flags to look out for five years include Cannot perform basic tasks independently, such as getting dressed. Difficulty attending to an activity for more than five minutes. Not talking about daily activities or experiences. Or extreme behavior. Unusually fearful, aggressive, shy, or sad. Sir, ano yung bawa pa na sir? Kung saan yung mga bata na imun anak o situation, sir, asa yung pwede mga doon? Early identification of developmental delays is very important because it allows early assessments to be set up and timely interventions to be made available to help your child. So routine developmental assessments are very important. These should be done at 9 months, 18 months and 30 months. And they can be done in the polyclinic, with your GP or with your pediatrician. The child's health booklet has much information to help you track your child's development. There is also a list of behavioural and social concerns that may need to be addressed. So see your doctor if your child has any of these concerns or if your child fails to meet any of these developmental milestones. Displaying any of these signs does not mean that your child has a developmental delay. But seeking medical advice early allows your child to be assessed and allow help to be provided for your child if needed. Oh, thank you so much for listening. Uh, uh, parents and teachers. So. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the day and I hope that you are going to have a chance to get some play in the first one. So that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Paul.